Hadith 18 Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directed to sit with ascetic Dhakarin. The Apostle of God Divine contact upon him and wholeness was in this house when the verse keep yourself bound to the company of those who would invoke your sustainer morning and evening was revealed to him. On this revelation, he went out in search of such people. He found a group of men who were engaged. And uh, 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 by the way, that verse is 28 of 18. He found people who were engaged in remembrance. Some of them were with disheveled hair, parched skins, and clad in a single cloth at least the knees and the bottom belly were covered. Except the loincloth, the whole body was naked. On seeing them, the messenger of God, ritual prayers of God upon him in wholeness, you know, because people pray and offer benedictions, and those benedictions are granted um, to the prophet. Well, you know, the ones that are granted on and by his influence, you know, that's why legacies are important, set down by them and said, All praise is for God, who has created in my community such people that I have been ordered to sit in their company. And this is narrated by Tabrani. An Abdir Rahman bin Sahla Ben Hunathan Kala Nazalat Allah Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wahua Fi Baadin Abyatahe Waspir Nafsaka Maaladina Yaduna Rabahum Bel Qadawate wal ashiya faharaja yal tamesuhum fawajada taman yadkuruna laha fihim thaeru rause wajaful jilde wadul. Kalbil Wahide Falamma Ra'ahum Jalasa Ma'ahum Wakala Alhamdulillah Lavi Jaala Fi Umati Man Umati Man Amarani An Aspera Nafsi Ma'ahum. And the verse there, okay. Is it and? Waspir nafsa. Waspir nafsa kamaladina yad runa rambam. Bangu wate washi. According to another hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went out in search of them and found them in the farthest corner of the mosque. Where they were busy in doing the dhikr of Almighty Allah, he said, All praise is for Allah, who created during my lifetime such people that I had been ordered to sit with them. Then he continued, My life and death is with you, i.e., you are my companions in life and death. It is mentioned in one hadith that a group of sahaba, including Salman al Barasi, radiallahu anhu, were engaged in the Qurbala, and Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to them. They became silent and replied to his inquiry as to what they were doing. They submitted and said they were making the of Allah. Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, I saw that. The Rahmah, mercy, of Allah, was descending upon you 
So I desired that I should join your company. Alhamdulillah. Our praise is for Allah. Then it continued, Almighty Allah has raised such people in my ummah that he ordered me to sit in their company. It is from such orders of Almighty Allah that the Sufis have understood that the Sheikh should also sit with his followers. In addition to the benefit that will thereby go to the followers, it will provide a good exercise for the person of the Sheikh. In the effort to tolerate the rudeness of the uncivilized and uninterested people, his self-importance will undergo severe tension, and thereby he will develop humbleness in him. In addition to this, the get-together of hearts is important for attracting the mercy and grace of Almighty Allah. It was for this reason that offering prayers collectively was started. And this is why all the pilgrims and similar parents are made to pray to Allah together at the same time in the valley of Arafah. This point has been repeatedly and especially stressed by Shah Wahullah Rahmatullah in his book, Hujatullah al Alagba. All these virtues, as mentioned in many ahadith, relate to the group of people who are engaged in dhikr. On another land, if someone happens to be in a group of the unmindful, and if, they're, and if he happens to be busy with dhikr of Allah, great reward is also promised for him. As stated in many ahadith, on such occasions, it is the more necessary that one should remain engaged in a remembrance of Allah, and so that he is safe from the evil of such company. According to one hadith, a person who remains busy in dhikr while in the company of the careless is like one who remains firm in his allocated positions in a jihad, while his companies are running for their lives. In another hadith, he is like one who fights non-believers single-handed after his companions have run away. And remember that Islam does not tolerate fighting people just because they don't believe. It says that God curses the people who... Uh, and There's a hadith kutsi that says that God curses those that uh, fight to... Uh, forced conversion. He is also like a lamp in a dark house or a beautiful green tree in autumn when all the trees have shed their leaves. Almighty Law will show him beforehand his house in the Jannah of all his sins, even if equal to the number of all men. You know, we're referring to gender neutral here. We're referring to all human beings and animals will be forgiven. All these rewards are subject to the condition that if one remains busy in the dhikr while in the company of the careless, although it is forbidden to even join in such meetings. According to one hadith, one should keep away from the so-called friendly gatherings when there is nothing but idle talk and celebrations. A pious man once took his Abyssinian Ethiopian maidservant to the bazaar, he leaving her in a palace and asking her to wait and return there when about the market. When he returned, he was upset to find her missing. He went home, and the maid servant was already there. She came to him and said, O oh master, do not be angry with me in haste. You left me in the midst of people who are absolutely careless in the remembrance of Allah. I fear that some disaster should befall them, or the earth should swallow them, and I too would be buried along with them.